that uh, will be um, Senator Ossoff. And if there's any other senators who wish to ask questions, who haven't asked questions, uh, you should tell us, because those are the last two we have. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and let me say to each of the witnesses here today, thank you for being here. Thank you for your testimony. And, and, and thank you also for your service. Uh, I want to thank each of you and, and also each of the heroic law enforcement officers who, who demonstrated extraordinary courage uh, in fighting to repel the terrorist attack that unfolded on the Capitol on January 6th. And, and we are grateful for the bravery and the courage in the, in the face of a, a truly horrific attack. In the aftermath of that attack, there is naturally a process uh, to assess what could have been done to better prevent that attack, to better secure the Capitol. And I think everyone recognizes that, that hindsight uh, is different from a decision made in the moment facing the threat immediately, but this, this hearing is nonetheless productive for analyzing the security decisions and law enforcement decisions that were made real time and for learning from them what can be done differently to ensure that, that an attack like that never again occurs. Chief Sund, I, I, I want to focus on, with some detail, your, your written testimony and just walk through what, what occurred uh, in the days preceding January 6th and then on January 6th. So in your written testimony, uh, you say, on Monday, January 4th, I approached the two sergeant at arms to request the assistance of the National Guard, as you had no authority to do so. You go on to say, I first spoke with the House Sergeant at Arms to request the National Guard. Mr. Irving stated that he was concerned about the, quote, optics of having National Guard present and didn't feel the intelligence supported it. He referred me to the Senate Sergeant at Arms to get his thoughts on the request. I then spoke to Mr. Stenger and again requested the National Guard. Instead of approving the use of the National Guard, however, Mr. Stenger suggested I ask then how quickly we could get support if needed and to lean forward in case we had to request assistance on, on January 6th. Can, can you describe at, at, at a little more length those conversations with, with the two sergeant at arms on, on January 4th? Absolutely, sir. The uh, first um, conversation occurred Monday morning. Uh, I went over, I, I'd have to l refer to my notes, but sometime maybe around 11 o'clock uh, in the morning, I saw, met with Mr. Irving in his office. That's where I made the first request for the, for the National Guard. Uh, he had indicated, I don't, I don't know if I really like the optics. You know, I don't think the intelligence really, really supports it. Uh, he had, like we had said, um, recommended I talk to the Senate Sergeant Arms. I went over and met with, uh, later on the day, uh, either I'm trying to recall if it was in person or over the phone, I'd have to go back to my, my, uh, my timeline, uh, where I reached out to him, uh, and they may have already talked, because uh, he had referred me, he said, do you have, know somebody over at the D.C. National Guard? I said, yes, I do. I have a good friend over there, General William Walker. He said, can you give him a call and see if we needed assistance, how quickly could we get assistance and what type of assistance could he give us? So that evening, as I was driving home at about 6.35 at night, I went ahead and called uh, General Walker uh, and, and spoke to him and said, hey, General Walker, I don't have uh, authority to request the National Guard, but I want to find out if we needed them on Wednesday. How quickly could you get them for us, and is there a way you can kind of, you know, be prepared just in case we put in, the re put in the request? At that point, he had advised me that he has 125 National Guardsmen who are supporting the COVID response in the District of Columbia. And if we needed a, a response, a quick response, he could, what he called, repurpose them and get them to the armory, at which point we could get somebody over to swear them in and try and get them to us as quick as possible. We ended our call. Uh, the next day, I met with uh, both, uh, Ms. I met with Mr. Um, Stinger. He came over to the office for the 12 o'clock video call that I had hosted with the dozen of uh, the law enforcement officials from the National Capital Re for the, from DC. We spoke about it briefly there and uh, told him what William Walker had told me, as well as I'd passed on to Mr. Irving, I think later on that afternoon, they both seemed satisfied with that response. So Mr. Irving and Mr. Stenger, Mr. Irving, as I understand it, you have some disagreement with the characterization uh, about the concern about the optics. So, so I would invite both Mr. Irving and Mr. Stenger to, to relay your best recollection of, of that conversation on January 4th. 
Senator, my best recollection of the conversation on January 4th was a phone call from Chief Sund indicating that he had received an offer for 125 unarmed guard that could be positioned around traffic perimeter checkpoints at the Capitol. My recollection again is as we followed up with Mr. Stanger, the three of us engaged in a conversation whereby we looked at the offer in light of the existing intelligence. And the decision, the collective decision amongst the three of us was that the intelligence did not warrant the National Guard. And it's my recollection that ended the discussion relative to the, the, the offer. And the only question on the table is, any, should we do, pr perform any follow-up? And Mr. Stanger recommended that we ask that, we, that they be placed on standby. So, and that was the end of the discussion. So to, to the best of your recollection, did you make the comment about optics? And, and if so, what, what did you mean by that? I cannot re remember my exact verbiage. Had I used any language to the effect, I w it was all in reference to whether the intelligence was matched to the security plan. Uh, and, and, and let me ask both Mr. Irving and Mr. Stenger, did, did you all have conversations with congressional leadership, either Democratic or Republican leadership, on this question of supplementing law enforcement presence, bringing in National Guard, uh, either on January 4th or real time in January 6th? On January 4th, no, I had no follow-up conversations. And it, and it was not until the 6th that I alerted leadership that we might be making a request. And that was the end of the discussion. Mr. Sanger? Uh, for myself, it was January 6th that uh, I mentioned it to uh, uh, Leader McConnell's staff. So there's been some disagreement about what time phone calls occurred. I know Senator Portman asked earlier Presumably everyone has phone records. I think it would be helpful if, if each of you could forward the relevant phone records to this committee. And, and Chief Sund, you also reference in your testimony that you sent an, an email to uh, congressional leadership. Uh, I have it. Uh, if you could forward that to the committee as well, I think that would be helpful. Thank you.